I would like to thank all of you for coming to my party, and a big shout out to my BFF Evie for helping me with the decorations, plus those delicious shortbread cookies she made were a hit. The pleasure was all mine, Holly. I put my heart and soul into making those heavenly cookies, and it means so much that you all loved them. Yeah, by her heart and soul, she means mine. Wait, what? How am I supposed to bake 200 cookies by myself? I thought we were working together. You'll be fine, Aurelia. Besides, I bought all the ingredients while you worry about the baking. So, technically, we did work together. Oh, that's my ride. Have fun, sis. She owes me big time. So to kick off this epic party, it is high time for my most favorite part of all, bone-chilling Halloween scary tales. Ooh, I'm all ears. I wonder what sort of stories will be told this time. Now, does anyone have a tale to share first? Ooh, I do. I do, Holly. Aurelia and I found a good one. Really, Sutton? Really. The school librarian recently let us borrow a book of supposedly true urban legends, since we wanted to find one that's guaranteed to actually be scary. And we actually found one that supposedly happened outside this very town, and it took place in the 1920s. Hmm. I'm intrigued. Of course, I think Sutton can tell the story better than I can. So go ahead. Make their whiskers quiver. Alrighty then. This story is called, The One-Eyed Weeping Willow of Blood Lake. Long ago, there once was a little girl named Willow. She lived happily with her loving father and twin sister, Selina. Their mother had died when they were babies from an illness. Their mother came from a wealthy family and left her entire fortune to her daughters, but left enough for her loving husband to provide a good life for all of them. While he shared a huge mansion with his girls and had many helping paws, it broke the father's heart with the thought of his precious daughters growing up without a mother. So he vowed to find a new wife, suitable to love his children as her own. It didn't take long for the father to find a new maiden, beautiful, but cold towards children. She heard of his late wife's fortune she left behind, and plans to marry the father to inherit it all for herself. Young Willow and Selina saw right through their soon-to-be stepmother and immediately informed their father. Thankfully, he believed every word and immediately called off the engagement, sternly telling the greedy maiden that his wife's inheritance belonged to his daughters when they came of age. Furious that she'll never claim the riches, the maiden decided to do something terrible. If she couldn't have the fortune, then neither will Willow or Selina. She knew the two sisters often played together by the bank of the lake nearby their home, as it was their own private place to go when their father was busy. She spied on the twins, who were carelessly playing by the lake, having a great time, and the two girls decided to play a game of hide-and-seek, which was exactly what their ex-stepmother was waiting for. Willow ran off to hide, leaving Selina to count. Soon the young girl found a great hiding place under an upside-down canoe and waited patiently for Selina to finish counting. Willow remained hidden for a long time, wondering why her sister was taking this long to count to 30. After hiding for 20 whole minutes, Willow had a feeling there was something wrong, since she never heard Selina call out, Ready or not, here I come! 
She crawled out from under the boat and hurried back to their usual spot to check if her sister was all right. But by the time Willow made it back, there was no trace of Selena anywhere. Looking straight ahead, she could see her ex-stepmother staring down at dark red ripples in the lake. Willow suddenly caught sight of a bloody knife in her paw before the lady turned to face the traumatized child with an evil look on her face. Willow knew the woman had something to do with her sister's sudden disappearance, and she was next. Quickly, she began to shout loudly for her father while running around trying to escape, while the deranged woman swung the knife. But the evil maiden got the upper paw after the poor girl tripped on a rock. She pinned the child to the ground, raised her bloody blade, and shoved the knife into Willow's left eye. But the maiden found herself getting stabbed from behind, at the exact second she stabbed Willow. Dropping to her knees, the woman turned to see Willow's father, armed with his own knife. He heard his daughter's cries for help, but came too late to save his girl as she laid on the ground, dying from the loss of blood from her stabbed eye socket. But her father was still going to make his cruel ex fiance pay for underestimating a father's anger when somebody harms his children. He grabbed her, looked her in the eye, and whispered, this is for my girls. He dragged the maiden close to the lake, held her head underwater, and drowned her to death. The father cradled his dying daughter and begged for forgiveness for meeting that horrible woman. Willow used the last of her strength to take her father's paw. After Willow finally died, her father took his own knife and shoved it in his chest to join both his daughters in death. Willow wondered in her last remaining seconds, what did her evil stepmother do to Selena, and where was her body? It wasn't long before numerous pets were found dead in different parts all over the lake, staining the water with deep red blood. Ever since Willow's murder, Pets officially renamed the lake Blood Lake, and many have claimed to hear and even see Willow weeping and wandering around the banks of Blood Lake every night. Wearing an old, tattered, mucky white dress, carrying her stepmother's knife, and her dark red eye socket continues to ooze blood everywhere she goes. <laughs> Imagine running into someone like that while walking home at night. I don't think Sutton is done yet. Go on, Sutton. Thank you, Holly. Now then, despite her disturbing disfigurement, the Weeping Willow is said to walk endlessly along the bank of the lake in the dead of night, as she desperately tries to find her sister so the two can enter the afterlife together. And everyone she meets that don't know about her sister, she stabs with her knife before she finally drowns them. The story also indicates that Willow will mistake other young girls around her age as her missing sister, convincing them to join her in the afterlife. Pretty spooky, eh? I'll say. Especially since the lake is like 30 minutes away from this neighborhood. You don't say? Hmm, interesting. Say Sutton, has anyone ever went camping at Blood Lake? just to prove that the Weeping Willow really does haunt the lake after dark? Well, if you want to find yourself literally sleeping with the fishes, then no, absolutely not. My dad, for example, won't even go near the lake. Well, I would never think about going anywhere near that place at night. And why not, Aurelia? Are you a little scaredy cat? Just because I said I would never go there after dark doesn't mean I'm a scaredy cat. There's a difference between being scared and being careful. Besides, the lake is probably off limits at night. You know, your sister has a point, Evie. No, she doesn't. She's just saying that because she's a wuss. Am not! Okay. Now that's not very nice, and I invited you both to have fun. Now, Evie, be nice to Aurelia. Fine, whatever. What do you say we tell some more stories? Yes, exactly what I was thinking. Oh, and great story, Sutton. Okay, so who wants to go next? As the footsteps slowly moved through the dark toward the bed, then 
they stopped. And once more, a creepy voice groaned. Who has my toe? Not me! You do! <laughs> yeah, that story became less scary after hearing it seven times. Which is why I decided to tell it once more here. There's lots of fresh meat here trying not to wet their pants. Holly! It's six o'clock now, honey. Oh man, six o'clock already? I'm sorry, guys, but it's getting late, so I'll have to wrap it up. Aw, really? But I was having so much fun! I know, I know. But don't worry, we'll do it again real soon. Now follow me in the kitchen for treat bags. Evie, I can't believe you took credit for all the cookies I worked so hard to bake for Holly's party. Come on, Ray Ray. When I said I would help, I thought we would make them together. Not how you leave for hours getting your nails done while I drowned my paws in dough all day. She's right, Evelyn. Apart from leaving your sister behind to do all the hard work for you, you never really spend any real time with her. Um, in case you forgot, Mom, I'm a high school senior now. Plus, I became the new Queen Bee since that prissy Delilah and her minions finally graduated last June. So, I got like zero time for any baby stuff now. When was the last time you saw me going to town on a pacifier? In case you forgot, sis, I'm in fourth grade, and I grew out of Sesame Street in second grade. Whatever, Aurelia. Anyways, the point is that I can't be seen doing childish stuff. Pets at school find that embarrassing. Evelyn, there's nothing embarrassing about spending time with your little sister and doing something she would like to do for a change. You may have a lot of admirers at school, but that doesn't make you a real queen. And you know what? That's exactly the problem. What? You mean that I have to become a real queen? Shh! Evie! You just don't get it, young lady. You are letting all this attention at school get to your head, and you only make Aurelia do things for you without giving her anything in return. Well, after making her bake all those cookies you were supposed to bake, you'll be the one to take her out trick-or-treating next week. What? Trick-or-treating? Mom, no! I'm not asking you, Evelyn. I'm telling you. But I plan to do something with Holly on Halloween night. No little kids allowed. Well, too bad. My decision's final. It's time for you to stop thinking about yourself and start thinking about your family. I can't think of a better way for a pair of sisters to bond than to dress up and go out for candy on All Hallows' Eve. You know what, Mom? I can't think of a better way either. And Evie? It may not be what you already planned with Holly, but at least Mom isn't stopping you from doing anything at all that night. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm off to figure out what I'll be going as this year. Except this something isn't what I wanted to do. What was that, honey? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all, Mom. Look at the time. I'd better give Holly the change of plans before she turns in. You mean your plans were changed too? Yes, Evie. I meant to tell you during my party, but it just slipped my mind in all the excitement. My little cousin Stanley is visiting next weekend for Halloween, and I'll be taking him trick-or-treating. Really? Well, my mom also made me cancel our plans, and now I'm forced to go trick-or-treating with my annoying sister. Uh, Evie, my mom's not forcing me to take Stan. I actually wanted to take him. He doesn't come very often, and whenever he does, I like to spend all my time with him. And what's so bad about taking Aurelia out to trick-or-treat? It's for babies! That's what's so bad about it? And mom's making me do it because she's got it in her head that I don't spend enough time with Aurelia. I can't be seen doing any baby stuff with little kids. It's so embarrassing. You know, you're starting to sound like Delilah, Evie. 
I heard she was so stuck up, she didn't even come to her big sister's baby shower. So sad. Holly, don't be silly. I'm totally not acting like her. If we knew Delilah, she would have acted 50 times more dramatic than me. But right now, I am just so ticked with Mom. Because I was really excited about our first ever Halloween camping trip. If we can't go camping, maybe we could all go trick-or-treating instead. Stanley is around Aurelia's age, so I think the two can really hit it off. It may not be camping, but at least you and me could still hang out. All we have to do is keep an eye on the kids. Well, that's actually not a bad idea. We won't have to miss our camping trip. Easy. Oh, come on, Holly. Just hear me out. Here comes the corpse bride. You may chocolate kiss the bride. <laughs> Get it, Mom? <laughs> Yes. Very funny, sweetheart. Now, I wonder where your sister is. Evie is probably going over the plan once more with Holly. See, Holly, too, is taking her cousin trick-or-treating, so we're all going together. Afterwards, we're all going back to Holly's for a sleepover. Is that why I saw you packing your overnight bag this morning? Yep. Her cousin is my age, so I think he and I will be great friends. Plus, Evie and Holly will get to hang out like they wanted, so... Everyone's happy. Hey, sis. Are you almost ready to get your Halloween on? Me? Oh, yeah. Totally, Ray Ray. While you're dressed like the corpse bride, I thought I would go as Tiffany Valentine, the bride of Chucky. Um, well, you've got the white dress, Evie, but brides don't wear black leather jackets. Well, Tiffany does, silly. Someday when you're old enough and can sit through it, maybe I'll show you the Child's Play franchise. But anyways, Holly and Stan are going to be here any minute, and I'm glad to see your bag is packed. Of course! Oh, this is going to be the best Halloween ever! Now, Evie, are you sure you and Aurelia are really going straight to Holly's after trick-or-treating? Of course I'm sure, Mom. Isn't including my baby sister what you wanted? Yes, of course it is, honey. Apart from that, I really want you to be responsible and stay close to her, and let Aurelia call me on your phone when she really needs to. She gets a little homesick when sometimes staying the night at Sutton's, and calling me just helps her feel better. Yeah, yeah, okay, Mom. Finally! Aurelia! Holly's here! Coming! Happy Halloween, Holly! Happy Halloween, Aurelia. Is Evie all ready to go? Oh, don't worry, Bestie. Evie's got her tail in gear. That's great. Oh, girls, I'd like you to meet my cousin Stanley. Stan, this is Evie and Aurelia. It's nice to meet you both. Charmed. Hey, cool costume. Thanks. Yours is cool, too. Stan, why don't you and Ray Ray wait by the car and talk? I've got a little gossip to spill before we bust a move. Look, Evie, I don't think taking the kids camping with us is a good idea. It's bad enough that we both lied to our parents, so let's just do what we told them and go back to one of our places after we're done trick-or-treating. No way, no how. Tonight was supposed to be about us, not a couple of little kids. You didn't sneak that tent in your trunk for nothing, and I don't give a tale what my mom says. You may give a tale about what your dad says. He is the town sheriff, you know. Besides, you never told me where we're going tonight. Oh, our campsite will be the best part. I'll tell you right now if you don't tell Ray Ray and Sam.
No, you're joking. Tell me you're joking. Oh, it's no joke, my friend. For All Hallows' Eve, this will be the perfect location to pitch our tent. But Evie, it's probably off limits after dark. Really? Then how come I couldn't find that info when I looked it up online, hmm? Evelyn, nobody dares to go there at night. It could be very dangerous, and our parents will kill us if they find out. For dog's sakes, Holly, will you quit acting like Mom already? If you don't like it, too bad. Nothing you can say will change my mind. We are going there, and that's final. She acts more like Chucky than Tiffany. What's keeping Holly? It's getting late. Maybe she got something on her costume and just wants to wash up real quick. So sis, after we hit every house on our block, where else will we go to get that candy? Well, Ray Ray, you and Stan will have a blast tonight because Holly and I are taking you guys to the best part of town. <gasps> the best part of town? Ooh, where is that? Shh. Let it be a surprise. I do love surprises. Yay! About time. Took you long enough. Don't listen to her, Holly. I hope you're finally ready, because me and Stan want to get started right away. Well then, what are we waiting for? Let's get that candy! Why must we be blindfolded? It's all a part of the surprise location, little sis. You and Stan just keep them on until I say they can come off. Aurelia, is Halloween usually this exciting for you? No, not really. Well, Bessie, let's get this show on the road already. Yeah, let's blow this popsicle stand. We're here! Are you sure, sis? Because I can't hear any other trick-or-treaters. Yeah, me neither. Oh, it's too quiet. Hey, we're not even in town anymore. This creepy place. I don't think I like it. Kids, welcome to our annual spooky Halloween camping trip. Camping trip? But we got a lot more trick or treating to do. Yeah, what gives? Sorry, little man, but your plans have been cancelled. We wanted to make sure we got here before it got too dark. I think you guys got just enough candy for tonight. You call a third of a bag enough candy? Are you kidding? You didn't even tell us where we are right now. We're near a lake. Duh. Now let's start unpacking. Okay, not bad. But I hope there's something fun that the kids can do. Well, I did bring my portable DVD player and some Halloween movies, plus the newest scary movie, Earth vs. the Throbbing Brains of Outer Space. 
You can watch that when I'm asleep. Because I'm not watching a bunch of gross, slimy brains crawling around. The trailer alone really gave me the creeps. You and me both, sister. If that's the way you crybabies want it, be my guest. But this is our night, too. And we can't get enough of the scary stuff. Right, Holly? Right. Say, Stan, why don't you and Ray Ray go explore and gather some firewood? I packed some hot dogs and marshmallows to roast when you're hungry, and we still need wood. I guess that could be fun. Come on, Aurelia. It's not as fun as trick-or-treating. Let's just hope that they don't figure out what lake we brought them to. If your sister finds out, she'll be begging to go back home. Aurelia, if you think I'm packing up to take you home. Fine. Then I'll use your phone to call mom or dad to come get me. Sorry, Ray Ray, but my phone has no signal out here. And even if you tried, I recently changed my password. What? But why would you do that? Because mom had already ruined Halloween night for me. Forcing me to drag you along just so you can go from door to door begging for junk food. And I was not going to let that waste of time get in the way of my night. Your night? It's my night too! And all I wanted was to trick or treat like everyone else! Well then you can walk back to town alone! It wouldn't be any fun for me! I'm staying right here. This is my night. And I am not letting a little brat like you ruin it. <gasps> Evie! Don't call her that! I'm not being the brat here. You are! I can't believe you! You're completely self-absorbed! Making me bake all those cookies and take the credit? Lying to mom about the sleepover? Just so you can camp out in this place and cause me and Stan to miss out on the candy? I should have begged mom to let me go with Sutton instead, because you just wanted tonight to go your way again. It's not fair, Evelyn! You just ruined my night! Aurelia, what are you doing? I'm taking my candy bag and leaving this creepy place. I'd rather be anywhere but here, away from my selfish sister. Enjoy your Halloween. Ray Ray, you can't go all by yourself. It's getting dark. Not a problem. Cats can see in the dark. Uh... Uh, aren't you gonna do something to stop her? Hmm, let me think. No. Good luck, baby sis. Hope you don't run in with the one-eyed weeping willow. What? At least this means I can watch the throbbing brains now. You are mean, Evie. M-E-A-N, mean. I agree with Stanley. You are so selfish, sometimes I don't understand why we're even friends. Holly, where are you going? It's time to go watch our movie. Your movie. After disrespecting Aurelia, I would rather hang out with Stan the rest of the night. I'm staying right here with him by the fire, and I will not step one paw in that tent until you're asleep. Holly, come on! Save it, Evelyn. What you said to your sister was just cruel, and I'm not talking to you for the rest of the night. Want some hot dogs, Dan? Fine. Have it your way. That just means more snacks for me.
Holly, look over there. Look over where? There. Huh? What? Where did she go? Who? I just saw this girl. She was all dirty, and she was crying. No, Stan. I really don't see anyone around here. But I swear, cuz, there really was a girl. I'm not making it up to scare you. This lake is scary enough as it is. Yes, this lake definitely is pretty scary, but I didn't hear or see a weeping little girl. Maybe some good old roasted hot dogs and campfire stories might bring you back to your senses. Eh, why not? It's no use. I search around these banks every night. And there's still no sign of her. Oh, Selena. I'm sorry I couldn't save you. Please, forgive me. Please. Just my luck. Everything around here all looks the same in the dark. And by the time I find the road back to town, the sun will rise and there'll be no more candy. Missing out on all the fun. All thanks to Evie. What? <laughs> Whatever you are, don't hurt me, please. 